What's the deal, baby? Y'all didn't know. Big boss, all boss dog. Can't poke through the dope. The Texas box. Hey, man, look. I need y'all to do me a favor. I need y'all to go to this Instagram. Hercules underscore TKO. Right? If you live in Texas or, you know, surrounding areas of Texas, you know, or Houston, Dallas, whatever. Click the link in this dude bio. Right? And go support his fight. His name is John Torres. I think he fight at either 168 or 175. Um, he's 4 0, 4 KOs. Um, dude, a hell of a fighter. Southpaw, got power in both hands. Strong jab. Um, man, let me tell you, this dude right here, I, I've, I've done many rounds in that ring with this brother. You know, we used to spar at, we started sparring at 713 Boxing Gym. You know what I mean? Um, those who know, y'all know where that's at. That's on the north side, uh, close to Umbel. You know what I mean? 713 Boxing Gym. We started over there. We sparred at uh, the Knockout Factory. We sparred in, in a garage. You know, this dude has helped me be a better fighter, you know, when I was active. You know what I mean? Real humble dude, not big headed. You know, will help anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he's training at, out of Beaumont now. But dude is a is a good fighter, bro. You know what I mean? And very humble, respectful, will help anybody. So, you know, I gotta pay it forward to him because he made me better. You know what I mean? Cause I remember coming in the gym and you know, I'm thinking, man, cause I hit hard, you know, cause my coach originally, we uh the coach I had at the time. I was sparring dudes that was like around my size on my level, right? And I was melting them. So then I start sparring John. And let me tell you, man, I struggled. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm a power puncher, right? So I was in love with my power. You know what I mean? I'm, Cause I saw how it, what it did to people. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, this nigga. I hit this nigga, this nigga folded, man. So he wasn't folded. And then he, I think that nigga hit harder than me, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I think buddy hit harder than me. You know what I'm saying? But um, please go do that. Go support that boy, man. Please. Now, let's talk about uh, the fight. All right? Jamel Charlo versus Terrence Bud Crawford. Let's talk about it. So. Terrence Crawford got his eyes locked on Jamal Charlo. And I just heard from Boxing Ego on his YouTube shorts that the WBO plans to strip Jamal Charlo after his fight with Canelo. All right? So, um, Tim Zhu will be elevated to the full WBO champion. You know, Jamal Charlo will no longer be listed as undisputed at 154. So, um... Which free I get that that frees up Terrence Crawford to fight uh to reach out to Jamel Charlo for a fight after the Canelo fight. I'm saying Jamel Charlo will lose to Canelo, as is what I predict. Um because of the weight. And um I think that uh it'll be you know, I do think Jamel Charlo has some success in the fight, but I think that um Canelo will prevail. I just, I, that's just what I see. You know, uh, we shall see. You know, but um, I just think that weight, man. If they're fighting at a catch weight, I'd be like, ah, 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 okay. But they fighting at the full 168. You know, Charlo going up like two weight classes. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. So um, it's another politic thing that Canelo do, you know, it is what it is, ain't no excuses, he signed up for it, he gonna have to do what he gotta do, but, um, after the fight, I mean, it frees up, like I say, for Terrence Crawford to reach out to Jamel Charlo and see, like, hey, man, you really wanna fight, and, uh, I would like that fight, I think Jamel Charlo and Terrence Crawford is a good fight, I think it's a dangerous fight for both fighters, uh, because you're dealing with, uh, Terrence Crawford's not dealing with you're dealing with a different style. And I know Bo Mack think that Jamel Charlo and Earl Spence fight the same, but they don't. Um, 
their fundamentals, like their makeup, as far as fundam being fundamentally sound, that is the same. But as far as just you know, uh, you know, Errol Spence and uh, Jamel try to find the same. They fight two different styles, you know. Um, but so it's a dangerous fight for both of them. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie. You know, um, I think going into the fight, it's a 50-50 fight. I can't decide who would be the favorite. You know what I mean? Because I can make arguments for both guys. I would have to watch. I mean, I watch a lot of Jamel Charlo fights, but, you know, I watch a lot of Terrence Crawford fights. It's just that I would have to really, I would have to really analyze the fight more. You know what I'm saying? But it's a dangerous fight for both of them. You know, uh, I know in the past, I said Jamel Charlo will stretch Terrence Crawford. I still feel the same way, you know? But I do, I, I can, Terrence Crawford showed me some things in his ass fist fight. I'm like, okay. He can level up. So, you know, and I've always said that. I said, Terrence Crawford shows in the instance fight he can level up. I can view, I kind of change my perspective a little bit on the Charlo fight, you know, because I had the Charlo fight more like 60 40 Charlo. Now I got it like 50 50, you know. But the thing I will say is this Terrence Crawford got to be locked in for 12 rounds. Jamel Charlo need two seconds. That's the difference between these two, right? What you mean? In this breakdown, right? Terrence Crawford got to use his speed, right? He got to use his speed. He got to change angles, kind of like what he did with Earl. He got to look to throw in between Jamel Charlo's shots, like he did with Earl. You know what I'm saying? Um, Charlo's really not a combination puncher. But he is heavy-handed. You know what I mean? I mean, look at all at 154. You know, all his titles that he won, he knocked them out and took that title. He didn't, he didn't come to a decision. He knocked them out. All the titles he got, he knocked them out. When he was fighting, uh, for when he won his first title, that WBC belt, and he was fighting uh, Jackson. I think his name Julian Jackson or something like that. When he fought him. That boy was beating Charlo. And then Charlo landed a shot. It was a wrap. It was over. Charlo became WBC champion. Then Charlo fought Tony Harrison, right? And we, of course, we're skipping some fights. Charlo fought Tony Harrison. He lost the first fight to Tony Harrison. Okay? Went listening to Derek James. Came back the second fight. Was listening to Derek James. Did everything Derek James said. Knocked out Tony Harrison. Right? And Tony Harrison did some great things in that fight. But... Charlo sparked him, right? Jason Rosario, Charlo listened. You know, he ain't had to fight him twice. Sparked Jason Rosario, right? Then, Charlo Castano. Charlo didn't listen to Derek James, right? The first fight, draw. Some people feel like he lost. Okay. Second fight came. Charlo stretches Castano. Right? So I just think that when Charlo is right and he listen, kind of same thing with Bud. You know what I mean? Like, when, but it's like with Bud, when he fight off emotion, when he fight with his heart, it's, it, it's a different Bud. When he fight with his IQ, that's when you get the best Bud. You know what I'm saying? Like he did against Errol. Right? So, I think what Bud got to do, like I said, is use his speed. Um, back Jamel Charlo up. Put Charlo on the ropes. You know what I mean? Because uh, Charlo doesn't fight well on the ropes. You know what I mean? He don't fight well on the ropes. He's still dangerous because he still can land a shot and cut your lights off. But, like I said before, he don't really fight well on the ropes. He's not like... L, where you get him on the ropes, he can fight on the ropes. He's more like he 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 got like that puncher's chance type thing. You know what I'm saying? So like I say, with Charlo, what Bud got to do with Charlo is keep Charlo on the ropes, back Charlo up. You know what I mean? 
use his speed, change angles, and throw combinations. You know what I mean? Castano had a lot of success with the combination work. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just real talk. When he threw combinations, Castano had a lot of success on Charlo. You know, and, and not do the same thing twice. You know, disguise his work. You know, I I, I, I could see Terrence Crawford giving Charlo on one side of the unanimous decision. I don't really see a knockout um, coming from Terrence Crawford. But I can see like a one sided like unanimous decision where he just like outbox Jermail Charlo. You know what I mean? I definitely can see that. I can see Terrence Crawford outboxing Jamel Charlo for 12 rounds. I can see that. I don't see a knockout. Now, Jamel Charlo, what Charlo got to do is stay off the ropes, right? Stay off the ropes, disguise his work, use different jabs. You know what I mean? That's what he got to do. And don't stand in front of Bud, right? So he got to use lateral movement, right? So he going to have to fight that fight. Well, in between, like, how he fought Castano and how he fought Tony Harrison. He's going to have to put those together, right? He also going to have to make deposits to the body. But he has to stay off them ropes. You know what I mean? Use lateral movement. Keep that jab working. You know what I mean? Because I think Terrence going to be catching him. I think Terrence going to be winning a lot of rounds on him. I think what it's going to come down to with Charlo and Terrence is I think Charlo going to get that perfect moment where he going to land that shot and it's going to be a two. And that's why I think he going to hurt Bud and he going to stop him. That's why I think. I think Bud going to be up on the cards. But I think Charlo going to spark him. And I've always said this. I've been saying this for the longest. Even since Bud started talking about Charlo, I said Terrence Crawford going to have to be perfect for 12 rounds. Jamel Charlo gonna have to be perfect for two seconds. That's it. All he need to do is line butt up and it's a wrap. If he get a fresh shot on that boy, it's a wrap. I'm just saying, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. That's what it comes down to. It's a 50-50 fight. Terrence Crawford has shown me, like I said, and I've been saying this, the L Spence fight was my, my measuring stick on Okay, how will Bud Crawford, you know, fight Jamel? And he dominated Errol. So that lets me know, okay, he can level up, right? So that makes the Jamel and Terrence fight a 50-50 fight. And that will be very, very entertaining. Those press conference is going to be off the chain. But what I'm saying is, is that with this particular fight, it is anybody's fight yet again. Anybody can win this fight. But like I said, I don't see a knockout coming from Terrence. Um, I can see a one-sided beat down like to an unanimous decision coming from him. But Jermail, I see a, I see like Terrence up on the cards and then L pop, and it's over. <laughs> I mean not L, Jermail pop, and it's over. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Terrence Crawford, Jamel tends to struggle with moving his head. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, and he's the faster fighter. And I'm only speaking from experience. When I was in the ring with guys that were faster than me, right, and they was catching me, right, I would throw my jab, but I also, while I'm throwing my jab, I'm changing my angle, right? And when you throw that jab and you jerk their head back, that makes them reset. Right? That makes them be like, okay, I have to, you know, I got to get back going. Right? And Jamel Charlo has a great jab. So I think what Jamel got to do is use that jab. You know what I mean? Jamel got a very dominant jab. It's very impressive. But he going to have to use his feet a lot in this fight. That's what it is. He going to have to use his feet. That boxing ability that he had under Ronnie Shields, he gonna have to use it in this fight against Terrence Crawford. You know what I mean? If they fight. I know he fight Canelo, you know, but Terrence Crawford is locked in on Jamel Charlo. So if that's the case, and they fight, it's a 50-50 fight. You know what I mean? 
I can't pick a winner right now. I got to really analyze that. I still think my heart is going with Terrence based off the, like I said, his previous performance. My mind is going with Jamel. You know what I mean? That's just what I believe. My mind is going with Jamel. Let me tell you something about Jamel. And no, and these 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 grudge match fights where Jamel like him and his opponent hate each other, Jamel be sparking these niggas. <laughs> that's a, that's all I'm saying. And I only can go off experience. Now most people may say Terrence Crawford is different. He's a special fighter. He's not Tony Harrison. He's not Brian Castano. He's not none of these dudes. Those dudes suck. And Terrence is the greatest fighter in the world. He can whoop everybody from 147 to 168. Let you let them tell you. I'm telling you is this. Every dog got their day. Right? Jamel Charlo already had his day. He probably finna have another day. Again. Against Canelo. Right? So... I don't know if, if if you getting a pissed off determined Jamel Charlo. I don't know. You know, every dog got his day. But granted, they, he may not fight Jamel. He might fight Earl again at 154. You know what I mean? I know a lot of y'all hoping that Earl don't activate that rematch clause, but I kind of hope he do. You know what I mean? Like, F it. You know, the boy whoop him a second time. Hey, man, Errol, go sit down, man. <laughs> Errol, go sit down, bro. You you did what you, you, hey, man. You know what I mean? I still think Errol is a top fighter. We're going to make a video about that. Errol Spence is still a top competitor in this division. So, but we shall see. Y'all let me know what y'all think, Buzz Gone.